Hello, in this video we're going to look at the Newton-Raphson and the Gauss-Newton methods for solving systems of nonlinear equations. In this first video, we're really going to look at the background <coughs> needed for part two, and that is finding tangent planes, or in the univariate case, a tangent line, to surfaces. Because in the Newton-Raphson and the Gauss-Newton methods, the approach is it's an iterative process you find a point and then uh, geographically you're taking intersections of objects and finding the next point and then re putting that point back in and etc and so this is a brief introduction to finding tangent planes and the key word is brief um, and you know if you need more on this you know I think it's in most calculus books the background is you know we're going to look at tangent planes so in the univariate case we have some function and we have a known point and and we can plug it into f but we want to find the tangent line to this point and we know that that is the first derivative evaluated at this point and so if we use the point slope formula then it's this. So this is the known point, right? And this is a known point. And then you plug it in. You know, this is the slope. And you can actually solve this. So if we take this to the other side and then switch them, we get this. And then if we multiply this in, then it comes down to this. And I'm writing it in this fashion because in higher dimensions, this is what it's going to look like. And this is, this is the line for this. And what if we were to, you know, to find that point, you know, the y equals zero? Well, we'd plug in zero here, and then we could back solve for this uh, value here, which would be this point here. Now, in the bivariate case, we have this. So we have some surface, 3D surface, and then we have a point in the x1, x2 plane, and it can be evaluated the function, you know, and then we get some y value. But then if we bump a plane up to it, and where it only touches, so it's a tangent plane, and then if you project that down into the x1, x2 space, it will intersect it in a line. Well, to find the the, this plane, you do this. It's the uh, partial of f with respect to x1 times this. So this is the coordinate x1, and this is the known point, the known x1 value. And then it's plus the partial of f evaluated at a point with respect to x2, and then times this. So the variable minus the known point value. Then we subtract y and this is the function evaluated at f1. But now we can take this and if we multiply this in to both sides, then we can uh, represent this in matrix form. So the partials is right here. It's called the gradient. So this is a vector. It's actually a column vector, but we're taking the transpose. So now it's a row vector. The first component is this partial. The second component of this vector is this. And this, this is x1, x2, which is what this is. So if we take this vector and multiply it into here, then we get this piece back. And then also we can do it for the second piece, which is a point, the known point. This is the gradient, take it, you know, vector multiply it. This is this value, and then of course, minus y we take to the other side. Well, if we have, so we have this equation for a plane, how do we find that line that intersects the x1, x2 plane? Well, we set y equal to zero. And then we can back solve for x1, x2, and then we, we would, um, no, not back solve, but then it would be the equation of that line. So since we restrict the dimensions of y to, to zero, then we're in this plane. Then 
For the multivariate case, it's also very similar that to find the tangent plane to a surface, it's this, the partial of our function with respect to x1 times this. Now this is the variable x1, and this is the known, the x1 component of the known point. And then the partial of f with respect to, to oh, and this is evaluated at our known point, that's what that means. And then times this, and that's the known point, that's the variable. Da, 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 da. Then you can put this in, in vector notation, where this is the gradient, and this is x1, x2 through xk. So this, this is a k by 1 vector, and with the transpose, it, it's a 1 by k vector. So that multiplies up, and you get this back, and the same here. Now, the reason that this piece is so important in... When we look at the Newton-Rapson and the Gauss-Newton methods, it's an iterative process. So we're going to repeatedly find this tangent plane or tangent line in the univariate case. Solve it for the intercept. Come down, solve it, solve it. And that's, that's the way we're going to do this. And here we'll have two equations, two unknowns. So we'll have two surfaces, two, pla two tangent planes that intersect the x1, x2 axis. Remember, but when it intersects the x1, x2 axis, it's a line. So then we get a line from surface 1, then we get another line from surface 2, and where they intersect, that's our new point Boop, that we use to help solve the system of equations. So just like here, you know, and it's an iterative process. Well, anyway, that's, that's it for part number 1. And part two, we'll just assume that you've watched this and go forward. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.